welcome back and in this video I'll be giving you some information on schema on read and schema on write. So let's get into it. Now first let us have an overview of ETL. So if ETL is a new concept to you, if ELT is also a new concept to you, I suggest you click on the links given in the description box. I have taken a video on what is ETL, what is ELT and what are the differences so you can Click on those links given in the description box, view those videos and then come back. It will be much more helpful. So for those who are very um, sure of what is ETL and ELT and have an idea about it, then this will be a little bit good to catch up. So let's get into it. So first looking at ETL. So as we all know, it's extract, transform and load. So you extract data and then you transform data and then you're going to load the transformed data into some target system. So the entire transformation phase, okay, the where you transform data, where you manipulate data, where you're massaging data, when you're changing the data's form, whatever, you know, manipulation you do with data, that entire transformation um, area is called as your staging area, okay? And why do we do this transformation is we all know. Okay, because data cannot be loaded directly into the target system. Why it cannot be loaded is because the target system will have a particular schema, will have a particular structure in which data must be in, in order to go and get loaded. But if the incoming data that is being extracted is not of that particular structure, you have to transform data in a way that it matches that structure. So that's what data cannot be directly loaded into the target systems if data must be loaded loaded uh, loading is nothing but write operations then it must match with the structure of the target system structure is nothing but the schema or the data model of that target system only then you can write data okay so this is an overview of the etl now if you want to see what a schema on write is so as I said, in order to load data, that is to write data into your target system, the data must match the structure, which is the schema of the target system. That is the target system over here. If data does not match the target system, then the data cannot be written into the system. Now imagine how tedious this is, how irritating it is because you have data with you, you're having data coming in from multiple data sources, you're bringing it in, but you don't, you, you cannot write it, you cannot load it into a target system and start processing that data and start using that data. That's kind of hectic and irritating, okay? So the by the word schema on write, it says that in order to write data, in order to load data, you need a structure. The data has to be in a structure in order to be written into the target systems so unless whatever data has been extracted it satisfies the particular structure that is required for the target systems only then it can get loaded and that is what is schema on right okay the data should have a correct schema as your target systems to go and get written into the target systems so a very simple example we are all familiar with SQL okay and when we want to write data when we want to insert any data into a table okay what we do is first we need to make sure that a table exists okay so that's the schema so you create a table first and when you have that only then you'll be able to write data only then you'll be able to insert data so this is a very typical example of schema on write and with this schema on write, since the data is structured and stored well, the read is very seamless and quick because everything is well structured and stored in your target system. So the moment you put a query, your data is structured, the query processing also is very fast. So that is something great about having your schemas already in place and your data just falling and being writing, being written into that already set schema. So queries get executed faster, but there is some challenges. If one schema fits for all your use cases, then well and good, okay? So let's say you're having a schema and then the data that comes in, 
everything perfectly goes and matches with your target schema your data gets loaded and then teams are, once the data is loaded they start accessing those that data and they start processing that data analyzing that data and they are getting benefits out of that data that's the happy picture okay but what happens if the incoming data from data sources does not match the schema that is present then what has to happen is the schema has to be altered okay the incoming data little bit the structure of that data needs to be altered or either you need to alter your target systems a little bit so that there is a perfect match between the data and your target system schemas so it's like these shape matching games where you have your shapes here and you have other objects and you need to match those objects to the perfect shape that it is related to so as long as you're having the shapes that already exist it's fine your data automatically gets loaded but if you're going to have some new shapes some new data coming into your system then what happens you cannot store this data you cannot make use of this data and that's why that's a very cumbersome um, step where you have to alter your schema a bit in order so that it matches and it can be written into your target systems and as we all know change is not easy and it takes time creating a data model modifying your schema there's a lot of cascading effects there's a lot of updates that you need to look into there's a lot of other you know dependencies that you have to look into to make changes and changes are not easy so this is something that is a challenge with this particular approach the next approach that we are going to see is schema on read so now schema on write is applicable for etl and you have schema on read schema on read is related to the elt process so as we all know the elt you have extract load and then transform so here the beauty of this elt approach is that you don't have to think about your schema and you don't have to think about what type of data you're dealing with whether it's semi whether it's fully structured data whether it's unstructured data whatever be the data type you can just load it into your data storage okay it can be a you know um, structured data storage it can be a uh, it can be a traditional data storage like a data warehouse a relational database it can also be a data lake or other big data storages so you load your data okay whatever data comes in you load it and then what happens is if you see in the recent trends it's not about how much data you keep storing up okay we already solved the problem of storing all types of data whether it's structured data whether it's unstructured data or semi-structured data the problem of storing these data types is solved you can store it you have data lakes you have other storages where you can store all these types of datas the main issue is the question is how well is the data utilized to get valuable insights now you have data with you it's there's no pride in saying i have you know tons of data with me the real you know um, efficiency lies in how well you drill into that data how well you crunch that data and pull out the utmost information that you're able to to get the value out of it so if you see every organization they have multiple use cases to solve and work on everyone's working on different problems it can be either a problem of you know an analyzing a current problem it can be you know totally finding out some new problem that might be existing you have data scientists you have data analysts then you have the regular executives working on daily you know tasks that require structured data transactional data you have different you know roles in your organization working on different use cases and everyone may not have the same structure that should be followed for example people working on databases they require a particular schema they require data to be in a particular format but if you see data scientists who work with unstructured data for example they don't need data to be structured in order to do the analysis they would drill into they would work with that unstructured data to get out insights from that so every person in the organization have different use cases to solve and their scenarios are different there's no like one fit for everyone okay 
So every use case will have specific requirements as to how their data should be structured, how they want to model their data. So because of this, ELT proves to be very efficient because when you extract data and load your data, you have data. So what happens is people, every role would be able to take up this data and work with it based on their use cases. So if you see schema on read, what is schema on read is schema on read gives the benefit of retrieving the most updated data. Okay. So here, if you see you're having extract to load your data, you don't need any criteria. There is a, you know, privilege of loading any type of data. So you have whenever data comes in, it gets loaded into your system. And now this new updated information that you have, okay. So you're retrieving the most updated data. It can be structured, semi-structured or unstructured and apply a model that is relevant to that data type and then you will be able to read the data. So the data that exists, okay, here, it can be structured, unstructured or it can be semi-structured. So depending on the data type, there will be different ways in which you will model that data in order to retrieve, in order to read information. So if based on different types, you will apply different models. For example, you have, if it's going to be fully structured, you'll have the traditional databases with the schemas. Some unstructured sources go for graphs, okay, which is like, for example, ontologies, knowledge graphs. All these make use of the graph theory, which is a type of data modeling. Then you have entity relationships. They are also a type of a modeling. Then you have JSON formats. It's all ways in which you can, you know, format your data, you can model up your data and then start reading data because definitely you will need a schema to read. Okay. The, when we say ELT, it doesn't mean that you load data and then you start querying data, you start retrieving data and data just falls in place. Definitely you need to structure it. You need to model it down in order to read data. So that's why after loading, there's a schema needed to read data, which is schema on read. So in order to do that type of a processing is where the third part of ELT comes in, which is the transformation of data. And then if you see for unstructured data also, there are different ways in which you can transform your unstructured data. There's NLP that is used. You have sentiment analysis. A lot of things are used depending on different use cases to get out useful information. So there are different models available, but all of them would be used to read data. So I hope you got the differences between schema on write and schema on read to sum it up. Whenever you have to write data, you need a schema. So that is called a schema on write and which is related to ELT, sorry, ETL. And when you come to ELT, it's all about schema on read because after loading data, finally to read the data, you need a schema, which is where the schema on read comes in. So I hope this video was informative to you. If you, if you like this video, please do give this a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe and also do share your feedbacks. Thank you.